Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I don't really care about the Synod, or I should say I don't really care as much as most people do, and I'm going to explain why. So this isn't a perfect comparison, but I want to set the stage. So during the lockdowns, um, I spent a lot of time covering the lockdowns as a journalist, podcaster, whatever. And I watched a lot of hearings, whether it was medical licensing boards or provincial this or provincial that. I myself went through a regulatory hearing thing with the Ontario um, College of Teachers because I was canceled for being, you know, too Catholic as a Catholic school teacher. Um, Point being, I watched and have lived through these bureaucratic things. And Watching what happened, consuming the information, I realized that the institutions are irreparably corrupt. There is no moral or philosophical or principled goodness left in any of the institutions. I'm not saying this to be completely negative. I'm just recognizing it as a fact. So, for example, when I would watch the... um, the uh, battles between doctors who had objected to the various COVID interventions and the right licensing board for physicians. There was no, the, the, the lawyer for, who was arguing on behalf of the conscientious moral doctors could present the greatest moral philosophical case on earth as to why it was wrong to force doctors to do X, Y, and Z. And the licensing board would basically say, Oh, well, that's interesting, but like our piece of paper here says otherwise, so sorry, you know, like you broke the law or, you know, you, you lose your license, you're, you're a bad boy. It didn't matter. Um, I've seen people, even in some cases, I've seen people have minor victories as far as, you know, keeping their churches open or, or, or keeping their businesses open or crossing the border without a, a vaccine passport or something like that. And they'll go to court and, and in some senses... They'll have a victory, but the victory has nothing to do with the morals of the thing. The victory has to do with the legal technicalities. Uh, Basically, it's, well, you know, we're hearing this case in August of 2023. The lockdowns ended in March of 2022. uh, So therefore, all of this is a moot point. Basically, this no longer has juridical effect. So we're not going to argue this case. We're just going to throw it out because it's a waste of time. It's like, well, it's a victory in the sense of so-and-so was able to not go to jail or not have to pay $100,000 because he kept his business open but he didn't actually win any moral victory. Why am I saying all this? I'm saying this because this is exactly what's happening with the Synod. The Synod is a bureaucratic, communist dumpster fire. Uh, Some people say it's a hostile takeover of the church. It's not a hostile takeover of the church. It's a facade. The hostile takeover of the church has been happening for 60 years. People wonder why, you know, we're in this position where... Um, essentially, you have a democratic vote system, something like that, where people show what they want and then a bunch of heretics mixed with some Orthodox Catholic prelates and theologians sit around with a bunch of nuns in pantsuits and pro-abortion activists and James Martin is there wearing a, a ski mask and they wonder why this is happening. This has been happening for 60 years. You know, no disrespect to the cardinals and things like that, like Cardinal Mueller and so forth, who are saying all the things that are, that are edifying to people. I get that. Um, but they're saying things that are watered down versions of what Archbishop Lefebvre said 40 years ago. I'm not doing this to be a, I told you so thing. I'm just saying this synod is literally the logical conclusion of collegiality that is part of the spirit of Vatican II. This has been happening forever. The synod is just the same thing as a bishop's conference on the world stage. And if you're wondering what's on this shirt, that's not me, that's my buddy, but I guess I am there. This is, uh, we were doing Eucharistic um, procession and we all were wearing sunglasses and looked kind of like security agents. So a friend made a shirt called Bouncers for Jesus. So that's why I'm wearing this funny t-shirt. Anyway, um, so the reason I say I don't really care in the sense is this can't change anything. Obviously it's distressing for people, but they want you to keep caring. They want you to keep tuning into these things. They want you to keep hanging on the words of every single prelate. James Martin said this. Cardinal Mueller said that. 
And again, I'm glad that people like Cardinal Miller are saying good things, but they want you to just be involved in this continual destabilizing, demoralizing process. This is communism. This is how communists act. They didn't condemn communism at the Second Vatican Council. That is the major problem. In a communist framework, and you don't have to be an actual card-carrying communist to be thinking like one. Many of the men in the church be, uh, think like communists because most people who have ever gone through any education system in the last 50 or 60 years have been educated with Marxist principles. It's just a fact. Unless you educate yourself out of that, um, basically purge your intellect, you will think like a Marxist. It's almost impossible not to. We're seeing that right now with Israel. And this isn't to get into, I mean, uh, the, the the details of the conflict, but all of these conservative commentators, you know, they're saying, I reject identity politics and blah, 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 blah. But the minute that you say, I'm not really a huge fan of Zionism, they're like, you're anti-Semitic. It's like, well, it's just identity politics. Even all the conservatives are Marxists is what I'm saying. The same thing is true in, true in the church. So what a Marxist wants you to do, they want you to be continually in conflict and continually in strife because while you're demoralized, then they can come with the knockout blow. This is what a good fighter does or a good military general, okay? If you watch a good boxing match, um, sure, they might go for the knockout early, but really they play the long game, they get you off balance, and eventually when you're tired, they, they throw the fatal punch, okay? This is what fighters do. Marxists do this. They keep you off balance, and then you're done. This is what's happening right now. Officially speaking, there is no way they can change the doctrines of the church. I'm not going to get into arguments about sin of occultism or indefectibility of the church or all these deep theological concepts. I'm not doing that right now. But let's just say hypothetically. Hypothetically, if tomorrow Pope Francis were to come out with um, a document which was the result of the synod saying, I hereby declare you know, gay blessings in every church or something like that. Again, I don't know. I'm not going to get into the legality of... How do we interpret this in light of X, Y, and Z? But it's just wrong. It's just not Catholic, and no one has to listen to it. And he didn't change Catholic teaching if he did that. This isn't to downplay people's concerns, but it is to say, just like with COVID, just like with Trump, they, you know, the communists, the Marxists, they have you glued to your TV set. They have you glued to your phone. They have you glued to the news. And you have to be consuming over and over and over again every single possible tweet or every single possible article or every single possible opinion or every interview with so-and-so and so-and-so. Because if you don't, you're just not going to know what's really going on with the Synod. And then they're going to come to their pre-conclude, pre pre-concluded, was that the word? <laughs> they're going to come to their pre-conclusion anyway. They're going to do what they're going to do with this. Just like the liberals at Vatican II were going to interpret the documents with the time bombs they implemented, which they've admitted to. Just like the, you know, Marxists who, who handle our societies when they started doing lockdowns and said they would never come out with vaccine passports, they knew they would anyway. This is how they operate. So I'm not saying give up. I'm not saying, you know, it's not good to know what's going on. What I am saying is the synod itself is a distraction. The synod is a demonic, legalistic, pharisaical mechanism that is used to get you to compromise on the Catholic faith because you're going to be spending all this energy saying, well, so-and-so is fighting back. So-and-so is fighting back. And I'm glad they're fighting back. But then by the end of it, the thing will be, have been so chaotic that you're going to be thinking something's a victory when really it's a defeat. This is what happened after the Second Vatican Council. The liberals presented the most absurd documents after they rejected the schema. And then the conservatives spent the next three years fighting tooth and nail to make the documents more conservative. So by the end, the documents were much more conservative, but it was such a impossible fight because of such a devilish plan by the liberals that by the time they get what they consider to be conservative documents, upon greater reflection over the next 5, 10, 15 years, you realize the documents themselves were still liberal and the victory is still there. This is what's happening with the Synod. Anyway, rant over. But yes, if you want to keep up on church news, yeah, it's important to a degree. I get that. Um, but God is allowing this and there can be no change in Catholic doctrine. And 
knowing every single in and out of every single document that comes out of this committee or that committee, all it will do is cause you to have basically turmoil. All it will do is weaken your faith. And then the liberals will have ev an even greater victory than you thought they would. If you just unplug and check out and focus on the catechism and focus on tradition, and this is why I've said it a thousand times, the SSPX is a providential gift from God because it doesn't matter where you live, if your diocese decides to throw in some crazy gay blessing thing or whatever, you've got a chapel down the road, and if you can you know, put away your codes of canon law and your legalist mindset for a second, you can find a way to raise your family and get your kids to heaven. Um, and there are other priests that do that as well who aren't in the SSPX. I'm just saying that's, that's all I'm saying. So at any rate, if you want to know more about why we are where we are, I did write a book, and uh, my book is called SSPX, The Defense. I'm going to see if I have, I don't think I have my thing for it here. Anyway, you can find that link in the description to this video. Don't become a slave to the synod of synodality news and whatever. That's what they want because by the time it's all over, you're going to be exhausted and they can come up with a knockout blow. So, as always, let me know what you think in the comments. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless.